Hey everyone, we're doing something a little bit different today, so much so that I need to switch hats. Oh, now that's more like it. Today we're reviewing the POF Tombstone. A little lever action for you, but you real ones out there, don't worry. I'm all hat and no cows. Gotta admit, I'm pretty excited to check this gun out. It's so different. But before we do that, I'd like to remind you to hit that like and subscribe button. We need all your support. You'll be showing YouTube that you like our content. We'll show you what we keep under our hat. Oh man, this entry is from POF, or Patriot Ordnance Factory out of Arizona. And this is the tombstone. Now, what is the tombstone? In short, it is a lever action pistol caliber carbine, and it is chambered in nine millimeter, comes with a 20 round mag. Pretty interesting stuff. You can see some elements of the AR-15 here, but also some other interesting things that we're gonna get into when we talk about ergonomics coming up. So let's jump right into ergonomics. Let's just start out here at the rear. You've got a good butt pad. And uh, this is also adjustable because it's a Magpul 870 stock. It should be pretty familiar to uh, some of you folks out there. You can actually pull this butt pad out and insert more of uh, these pieces right here to increase your length of pull. And you get a good grip right up here. Something that's noteworthy about the hammer back here, if you're into lever guns and you like also putting scopes on them, you realize that the scope can present an issue when your hammer is all the way up. POF has done a good job of angling the hammer back, but they've also included the side knob right here. And that is important because uh, some guns, the tolerances are so tight between the scope and the hammer that you really have a hard time getting in there. But in this instance, they've added this little lever so that we can go right back and pull that hammer down. Now, moving forward, you've obviously got the lever here and it's a short throw, partially because you've got the magazine down here, probably part of the new tactical realm of lever guns that are happening right now. You've also got a big loop here. Uh, that's another evolution of the tactical side of things. Some of the more traditional lever guns you'll see have a very kind of thin uh, loop right here. And then moving forward from that, cross bolt safety right here. Typically you see these located down by the trigger, but obviously this is a different setup. so. Safety is right here. You can access it on both sides, obviously. And then the mag release is very similar to an AR-15. Uh, just press it and release right there. But we're going to switch over because it's also mirrored on the left side. So right here and release that magazine. Holy sh... There we go. <laughs> so it's um, canted to the rear here. So you have to hit it in the back to get that to activate. I forgot to mention that the magwell in the tombstone is really nice. Look how well it's angled here. Uh, so that if you get the magazine pretty close, it'll shift right in. Then the rest of it is very similar from the standpoint of an AR-15. You've got this rail up front that doesn't run the entire length of the 16 and a half inch barrel, but you've got M-lock, on the sides and on the bottom. You've got a pick rail section on the top and bottom, and you've also got QD on both sides. The barrel is fluted. You can see that um, it, and, and it really does help, I think, in this application because the gun is light. It's under six pounds. And then we end in a pretty aggressive muzzle brake. We'll talk about that a little bit more as um, we move forward with actual shooting of it. And then the last thing I'd like to point out is you do have irons. Uh, and we'll get to those a little bit later, but you've got a ghost ring here in the back. And then you've got a bladed sight up front, a post with a white stripe on it. And uh, we'll be checking those out after we remove this one to six from primary arms. Let's talk about the trigger. This is a single action, pretty stiff right here. It just finally breaks with enough pressure. 
And then we can't really talk about reset because we have to do this to cycle the weapon. So again, it really doesn't move until it finally breaks. You build enough pressure and then it breaks. So here we are at 100 yards. We've got a few different ammos that we're gonna run. This isn't a precision rifle, but it does have a 16 and a half inch barrel. It is a nine millimeter, so it's gonna be interesting to see how it performs. We've got some Remington UMC 115 grain. We're also using the uh, Bellum 124 grain. And then we've got some AAC from uh, Palmetto State Armory that is also 124 grain. And we're gonna shoot some groups with those and see how they handle the distance of 100 yards. We do have occasional problems with feeding. Mira, mis huevos son mojado. <laughs> All right, we got our groups from 100 yards, and here's what we came up with. We started out with AAC, and we had a pretty widespread, like a five inch group here. And then we moved on to the Remington, which is 115 grain, and we had three, uh, two here, and then three down here. So one, two, three, four, five. And then the Bellum, I'm actually pretty impressed. We had five, one, two, three, four, five, right there, um, all pretty close together within uh, three inches. So we went from 124 grain out to 115 grain, which kind of explains this uh, drop, and then back to 124 grain in the Bellum. Uh, and the Bellum actually is uh, performing pretty well, I would say, on the order of three inches or three MOA. Now, I wasn't exactly sure what to expect with a PCC, a nine millimeter, 100 yards, but this is, uh, this is pretty interesting. What kind of groups are you guys getting with your PCCs at 100 yards? Let me know in the comments below. All right, we're having a lot of fun with this video. Man, shooting a POF tombstone, what a great reference. But if you want all the information, be sure to head over to the website, pewpewtactical.com for the full review. You're a daisy if you do. So we mounted a one to six on here because we wanted to test it out at MOA just to see how it would perform at 100 yards. But there was a problem with this setup. The Picatinny rail is great, uh, locked up really well with the cantilever mount but the mount is just a little bit too high. So I'm gonna demonstrate here. When I come on to try to establish cheek rest, I have to keep my head up. So I'm not establishing good cheek rest where you put your full weight of your head on the uh, gun, or on the comb here. And um, because of that, this causes me to have to lift my head up. So that's not ideal. Uh, so if we were going to run an LPVO on here, I'd have to figure out either rings or something else. Not going to do that. We're going to take the LPVO off. Moist. Everything's moist today. And by the way, we weren't exactly intending on hitting those keywords for wet t-shirt, but I'm sorry, here we are. We're going to take this off. Again, the one to six is great, and I think it uh, makes use of the potential of a 16 and a half inch barrel, but POF was kind enough to include some good iron, so we're gonna test those out right now. Hey, dang hogs, has got the ground all tore up. All right, we're going to get to our final thoughts on the POF tombstone here. But before we do, I'd like to ask you one more time. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Tell an amigo. Let them know that you love our content. We appreciate you. So, man, very cool gun. I dig this. That isn't to say that it didn't have its challenges. Uh, first and foremost, the short stroke takes a little getting used to. And we had some reliability issues in the beginning those slowly cleared up 
as we got past a few hundred rounds. And what we came to find is that the ejection pattern kind of limply falls out whenever you cycle the weapon. Occasionally that creates some issues uh, if you are short stroking it, if you're not giving it a very firm cycling, then uh, it is not going to function well. It's going to hang up, either try to create a double feed or it just will uh, fail to extract. When I was on the ground and I didn't have the benefit to run the lever, I created occasional issues like that. But like I said, getting out here, getting on the range, moving from target to target, and after several hundred rounds, it started to smooth out and we didn't see nearly as many malfunctions. Accuracy, I was very impressed with. I kind of wasn't sure what to expect, but I think with the Bellum ammo, we got down to three MOA and uh, or, or thereabouts. That's pretty decent, certainly, at distances of 50 yards and in, even with the irons, this has been uh, very accurate and I'm pretty impressed with it. I really love the lightweightness of it. It is just, like I said, under six pounds and you feel like you can tote it around all day. The muzzle brake, uh, again, this is nine mil, so it's pretty soft shooting anyway, but the muzzle brake probably helped with that even more. It definitely uh, is a joy to shoot and you can run it quickly. Uh, take some skill with uh, relaxing that part of your body that's holding the rifle, making sure that it's rigid and your sights are staying on target, and then cycling the weapon. Again, after a while, you definitely can get on and be accurate with this gun. It's a lot of fun. There are uh, some really good points about it. You know, it's very unique from the standpoint that it is a uh, PCC, but it's a lever action. It's also nine mil. So that has some applications that some people may appreciate, uh, especially in restrictive states where you have uh, different laws that won't allow you to have fun stuff. I wish that it included more than one magazine, but I understand that these uh, magazines are pretty widely available. It's, it's overall a really cool package. So price. Price is a little steep. On the website, they're around 1,900. I'm seeing them on some online retailers for 1,800. That's pretty expensive, but when you consider how unique this is, how different it is, you can make that judgment uh, on whether that's a good value for yourself. Once again, we want to thank you for watching. This has been the POF Tombstone. We'll see you next time, partner.